you're in your second year now, and is it any different? Does it feel any different now than maybe this time last year? Yeah, um, I think, you know, looking back to last year at this point and where I am now, it's, it's night and day for me. Just being able to just be confident in what we're doing, kind of know the play calls, and when you're able to do that more, you're able to kind of focus in more on what, what exactly is the offense trying to do to us and why exactly are we making this call. And you can get deeper into the defense when you know the basics, so you're able to just kind of relax. You know you're playing the right person. Um, you're not wondering, well, am I supposed to cover this tight end? You know you are, so you can be more aggressive on it. You're not second-guessing yourself all the time. How about attacking this offseason from a leadership standpoint? It seems like that's a role that you've openly embraced. What, what can you say about, about your new approach to that? Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, it, it's easier in year two to kind of be, be more vocal and be a leader. I think Coach Tressa said to me one time at Ohio State, he said, your performance on the field, your, your play, your production is going to ultimately let guys listen to you. If you go out in the field and you're not playing very well and you're just not a good player and you are demanding a lot out of your teammates, I mean, they're not really going to respect you and listen to you, but if you're a guy that produces, you're consistent, you're on time, you do all the little things right, there's someone that, whether they admit it or not, that you're doing it the right way. You know, when you produce and do that stuff, people tend to listen to you. And I think last year I was able to at least be consistent enough to, to where some of the guys know that um, I take football very seriously, I take this team very seriously, and I have a lot of pride in the St. Louis Rams organization, and I want to be a huge part of the reason why it gets turned around. And I think in year two, you just have to kind of keep on that, keep producing, and hopefully, you know, more guys will listen and follow. A lot of the rookies, Sam Bradford's mentioned it, and Marty Gilliard mentioned it, that you texted them or called them right after the draft. What, what did you say to them? What was your message, and, and what made you want to do that? Well, I think it's, a, it's just a mindset. You know, it's an attitude. I think last year, um, going 1-15 wasn't fun at all. I mean, if you're a competitor, doesn't matter how many, how many teams you've been on, doesn't matter if you came from a, a national title contender or whether you came from a team that never won in college. If, if you like to compete and you go 1-15, it's frustrating. And I just want to text those guys, just let them know, listen, let's get ready to get to work. You know, we're building something here and, and it's already turning around and we feel like we're already more improved than a year ago. And I think I wanted them to have that mindset. Don't think about it as you're coming into a 1-15 St. Louis Rams organization. Uh, look at it as you, you, have a, you have a chance to be a part of something really special uh, coming forward and, and have pride of where you got picked and um, you know it, it's, a, it's a cool thing to be playing for, for the San Louis Rams. I wanted them to kind of know that. Coach has talked a lot about how he can't get you away from football. Even when you have the, when you have the downtime you're always texting him things like that and there's like a month off till, till training camp. How, how are you going to handle this, uh, this next little uh, exodus from football? Well there, there's no month off you know it's, it's still training. I bought one of those laptops that the actual the coaches use. So I got film on there from last season. I have every game. I'll do some studying on Arizona, Seattle, and San Fran, and some more things I can pick up on, you know, and I'll go back and I'll, I'll train in Minnesota with uh, Larry Fitzgerald and his little camp up there, um, and just try to try to get in shape. You know, I figure Larry knows how to get in shape and talk a little trash, and I'm sure I'll receive a lot more that I can dish out, but, uh, it's good. It's good to kind of get away, but in the same in the same setting, to me it's like when I go home, it's not a vacation. It's going home to prepare for what we have to go through here at the end of July, early August.